Hello, welcome to the final webinar in our calibration and profiling series. Today's topic is creating, creating custom profiles. Presenting today is Darius Anderson, an application specialist at x -Rite Pantone. I'm Tiffany Brevey, Global Marketing Manager for Print and Packaging, and I will be moderating today's webinar. A few things to go over before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have questions, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel and we'll be sure to follow up. Finally, this webinar will be recorded, recorded and you'll receive a link so you can review the webinar at your convenience. I will now turn it over to Dar Darius. Hi everyone, my name is Darius Anderson and today I will be discussing what is the I1 published license and the benefits that comes with it. I1 Publish is a license package for the I1 Profiler software. It is the included license when you're purchasing either the I1 Publish Pro 2, I1 Publish Pro 3, or the I1 Publish Pro 3 Plus. You can also purchase the I1 Publish license as an upgrade code for any I1 Basic or I1 Photo product. We also sell the I1 Publish as a USB dongle for those who may use the ISIS 2 chart reader or need the license in a more portable fashion. When purchasing or using a device with the I1 Publish license, you have access to all the features found in the I1 Basic and the I1 Photo license packages. This includes monitor profiling, monitor QA, which is a quality assurance test as well as a monitor uniformity test projector profiling, scanner profiling, and finally, RGB printer workflow. The RGB printer workflow includes features such as profiling, optimization, measure chart, device link, and finally, transmissive profiling for I1 Pro 3 Plus users. Now that we know what's included from the I1 Basic and I1 Photo packages, what makes the I1 Publish package so special? The I1 Publish gives us access to the CNYK printer workflow. This workflow includes the CNYK versions of everything I listed in the RGB printer workflow, as well as a couple of unique features. So where is CNYK profiling typically used? While RGB printer profiling is typically tailored to photographers or those in the photo business, CNYK printer profiling is designed for imaging and any professional working in the pre-press or digital printing market. This is for those who printers is driven by a rip. So now that we have a brief explanation of the difference between RGB and CNYK printers, let's take a look at some of the differences in the advanced printer profiling section. For the most part, the entire printer profiling process is the same. You still choose a number of patches to print, scan, and finally generate the profile. The difference comes in a couple of settings. In the CYK printer profiling, you'll notice in the screenshot, there are options for patch set ink limiting as well as linearization. Linearization is something that I will discuss a little bit later, but let's take a look at patch set ink limiting. Patch set ink limiting is the total ink coverage that determines the maximum digital value for any patch in the patch set. When creating a CNYK test chart, the default value is 400. That's 400%. This is also going to be seen as 100% for each CMYK channel. Lowering the total ink coverage will reduce the total amount of ink that is used when printing the target. It's highly recommended to use the highest total ink limit. I will only recommend using this ink limiting function if you know it's poor ink adhesion, running, modeling, or any other image quality defects in the printed test chart, typically due to excessive ink. If you're working with a RIP software that has their own ink limiting capabilities, I recommend leaving the value in the IRO profile at the default maximum value. Another feature that can be found in the profile settings after measuring the color patches is called separation. While separation settings are in the software, we highly recommend leaving it to the default settings unless you know how your printer behaves and fully understand each adjustment. First in the list of separation settings is the option for full black separation. 
this setting, optimize profile separations to use black in replacement of CMY whenever possible. The resulting separation yields heavy black ink usage and reduced CMY ink usage. While cost effective, final print could look more coarse or rough due to the adjustment. Then there's the option for intelligent black. Essentially, this setting pr protects the gamut of the printer. When enabled, Intelligent Black may override the specified black curve to ensure availability of black to areas that need it when building the color separation. While this can be turned off, we, re we recommend keeping it enabled. The next four functions underneath the separation section are Black Start, Maximum Black, Black Curve, and Black Width. Black start determines what lightness level that black will be introduced into the separation. When the value is set to zero, black will be immediately available to the separation and will, be, will result in appearance of black in very light tones. Maximum black value determines the maximum amount of black that will be used in the color separation. In most cases, the value is left at 100%. In some high speed printing applications, this value may be reduced slightly to reduce coverage issues. The black curve determines how black is used when separating shades of black, aka gray. It is often the case that the blackest black of your printer is built from black ink as well as some amount of CMY or other inks. The black curve describes how black is used in building a ramp from the paper color to the blackest black. The black curve in combination with the black start and maximum black values determine how black will be used throughout the separation of a gray ramp. Finally, there is black width. Blacks are usually used in the reproduction of grays and desaturated colors. However, black may be also used to re reproduce more saturated colors and even extend the range of a saturated color that your printer can produce. Increasing the black width increases the use of black when separating sat saturated colors. Decreasing the slider restricts the use of black in a separation to more desaturated colors and grays. With the published license, you are not limited to just CMYK. You can also produce CMYK up to four additional spot colors. In the drop down list, you'll see these options. And if you're a Pantone Color Manager software user, you can import a Pantone color as an additional spot color. So now that we have that out the way, I did mention linearization earlier. This is a feature that can be selected under a CMYK workflow, and let's take a look at that. Linearization is the process of optimizing the behavior of your inks prior to printing your ICC test chart. Once you create a linearization file, you can apply it during the printer profiling process. This file is created by printing out a linearization test chart and measuring with your i1 device. If the RIP or software that drives your printer gives you the ability to linearize, you do not, you do not need to linearize using i1 profiler. Like ICC profiles, linearization is unique to each device and should be used only for the printer and media combination for which it was created for. The final feature under the CMYK workflow umbrella unique to I won't publish is the ability for printer QA. Printer QA or quality assurance helps you determine how your color prints compare to industry standard print specifications. In the printer QA module, you will select a control wedge that is compatible with your measurement device and is included in your color critical print. IO Profile does include some industry standard control wedges. For example, you will use ISO 12647-7 CMYK control wedge to evaluate compliance with G7 based print specifications such as Graco 2006 or SWAP 2006. Once your control wedge is measured, you can then select a reference file. The reference file is a set target of color values used in combination with a control wedge to determine the compliance with a printer specification. This specification includes ink properties, media properties, as well as tone behavior of the printer. You want to select a reference file that matches the print specifications you are trying to achieve. Once you have that specification selected, you finally move to the final step, which is QA report. The QA report provides results in a pass or fail indication based on comparison between the reference file 
and your measurement data. You can choose to see the results in either Delta E 1976 as well as Delta E 2000. And so that pretty much sums up the I want published license and its advantages. Like I stated before, this is tailored for those in the pre-press work or digital printing market with a printer using a RIP. If you are a photographer or someone who does basic desktop printing, I recommend the Iowa Photo License for that situation. Um, the floor is now open if you have any questions. My name is Darius Anderson. And it's been a, 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 thanks for helping you guys and talk to you guys today. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Darius. Uh, as Darius mentioned, if you have any questions that you haven't submitted, please feel free to do so. While we wait for some questions to come in, I'm gonna pop up one more poll. All right, I did have one question for sure that came in, Darius. It okay. is, can I make a custom profile for an Epson desktop printer? So if you're using an Epson desktop printer, um, I recommend looking at the RGB printer workflow for that. Now, purchasing the I won't publish, it does come with the licensing for RGB printer workflow. Um, but that being said, most Epson desktop printers, as well as Canon desktop printers, they use a RGB-based workflow. Even though you're still printing in CNYK, the ink is, is going through the printer and being processed as RGB colors. Another question here. For an RGB desktop printer, should I print the patches in the app or in I1? So I recommend printing through I1. During the I1, do the I1 profile software, when you print the test chart, you're able to go into the printer and turn off any type of color management, as well as set up, you know, the paper size and things such as that. And so you should be able, to, I would recommend printing out the I1 to make sure that all color management is turned off when printing the test chart. All right. Can the CMYK profile system be used without a black ink? So that will be difficult to use. Um, our software, when you're building a profile, it looks for all four channels. So you need that black ink in there. Um, now maybe third-party software is out there that allows you to build profiles without the black ink. But with our software, when building a profile without the black ink, it can cause e either the process to either fail or poor results in the final profile. What about using legacy ICC targets and also getting custom reference files in so to you, use? I use the ECI 2002. Yes. So even though the software is preloaded with some test charts, you can actually load text, shot, text charts into the software. So as long as they're formatted in the correct format, you can load them as CGAS files or text files into the software. And I believe I believe the ECI 2002 is actually preloaded in I1 Profiler. Okay. Can I create a profile with a printer that has or includes neon colors? That's a, similar to the black ink. Um, using neon spot colors, you can do that. You have to do um, the so you have your base CNYK colors, and if your additional colors are neon, that's when it goes into the CNYK plus. Um, range. So you can do that. Um, neon colors may act a little bit different prior compared to CNYK ink. So you may have to use something like measuring the M2 uh, mode or anything like that to help cut UV. All right. Thanks, Darius. It looks, yeah, no oh, problem at all. I was just going to say that looks like the last question, but I think there's one more. Hold on. Okay. Um, can I use the RGB to profile an Epson in the advanced mode or in the basic mode of I1? Yes, yeah, so RGB workflow has its own basic advanced modes as well. And then so profiling your Epson, you can go to advanced mode and calibrate the uh, printer. Doing the advanced mode, it gives you access to choose a more custom number of patches as well as other advanced features to adjust the profile. So RGB workflow has its own advanced settings as well. Okay, looks like we have at least one more that we have time for. 
When using printer QA, if I measure the proof control strip, will it only give me a compare or will it tell me if it will pass or fail to a SWOP standard? So yes, yeah, so in the printer QA, you will actually select that you're doing, um, the reference file is gonna be that SWOP standard. And so you'll measure the control strip and I didn't include it in the slide, but the final step will actually give you a screen that has uh, pass or fail. You can set your tolerance or how, how, what delta E tolerance you want to the actual standard, as well as show you if all patches pass to that standard or if um, certain patches does not patch that standard. So you get a visual reference of what patches didn't pass, what patches did pass, as well as the total delta E difference between your measurement as well as the standard. Okay. Do you have time for a couple more questions, Darius? I've got a couple more here. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. How do I import legacy profile maker spectral CGAT measurements to create new ICC profiles? So we're in the I1 profiler software. There should be an option um, on when you initially choose your test chart. There should be an option that says page data load save. If you click the load option, it will bring you open up a uh, explorer window where you can choose where that file is located and then you can load it directly into the software. All right. Is it possible to ink limit using the RGB workflow? No, ink limiting is a functionality uh, specifically to CNYK uh, workflow. Can I linearize an RGB printer? As well as uh, uh, ink limiting linearization is also limited to just CNYK printer workflow as well. Okay. And then a follow-up here. Also, can you individually limit the individual ink channels in the RGB workflow? So that's limited to, so that goes back to the ink limiting. So the ink limiting option is only in the CNYK. Okay, one side, great. Now I just have to learn how to use it. <laughs> uh, can I use a custom profile in any Windows software? I know Mac uses color sync, but Windows doesn't. So yeah, so Windows actually saves the ICC profile or as Windows tags it, ICM profiles, actually in your C drive. So if you go to your C drive, I believe you go to uh, Windows, system 32 spool drivers. There's gonna be a folder labeled uh, printers, I believe, and then it should have your ICC profiles there. And so every profile created on a Windows operating system will be saved there, regardless if it's a monitor, printer, scanner. It's an ICC profile, it will be saved there. And applications such as Photoshop, um, if you use on one software, any type of um, graphic design software that uses ICC pro profile, should be looking at that location already. Awesome. All right, it looks like that was the last question. So thanks everyone for um, all your great questions. And oh, somebody just said thank you. So there you go. Um, and this marks the end of our webinar. <laughs> Again, if we didn't have, uh, if we didn't get to your question or um, if you have another question, we will follow up with you and you'll receive an email with the link to the recording of this webinar. So thanks for joining and have a great day. Take care.